everyone. Welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about another very important biomolecule which is protein. Now, just the way Legos are the building blocks for a big toy, similarly for human body, the cells are made up of proteins. So, proteins are the building blocks of living cells. But proteins are polymers. The monomers for these proteins are amino acids. So before going to learn proteins, we have to learn about amino acids. So the learning objectives will be to know what are proteins, to recognize that amino acids are the monomers for the protein, to describe the properties of each and every amino acid, and to explain classification of amino acids. So first, proteins. Proteins are of prime importance. So the word comes from a Greek word proteus, which means of prime importance. The proteins were first studied by G. J. Mulder, but the term protein was given by J. Berzelius in 1838. Now we said that the proteins are biomacromolecules, which means they are polymeric. They got to have a monomer for that. So the monomer for proteins is amino acids. So we can also say that proteins are high molecular weight biopolymer of amino acids. These proteins form about 15% of the protoplasm. Now, how do they look like? They look like a beaded necklace. Just imagine a necklace with beads on it. So the amino acids are like those beads. These beads are like amino acids. So around 10 to 1000 amino acids, they join together and form a beaded necklace type of structure, which is protein. But this beaded necklace is still not functional. When will it become functional? It will become functional only and only when the protein has undergone certain foldings and bondings to apply and acquire a specific shape. So that shape is responsible for the function of that protein. Therefore, we can say a protein is biologically functional only and only if it has acquired a particular type of structure. Now the elements which are present inside a protein are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. Let us now learn about the monomers which are amino acids. So amino acids are the monomers which form proteins. What are amino acids? Amino means uh, amine group is present. Acid means some group which provides acidic nature to it should be present. So proteins are chemical compounds which have both amino as well as the carboxylic group on the same carbon and that carbon is called alpha carbon. Have a look. Can you see this structure resembles methane, right? In methane, all the four valencies are satisfied by hydrogen. But here, all the four valencies are satisfied by different functional groups. Let's have a look. On the left hand side is an NH2 group. On the right hand side is a carboxyl group. See here, this R group is a variable side chain. And the fourth group is hydrogen. As you can see, all the four groups are different. So what property does it define? This carbon is a chiral carbon. So amino acids are also chiral in nature. It is an asymmetric carbon. Now, this variable side chain is very, very important because this will determine the nature of the protein and the type of the protein. Let's have a look. So amino acids on the basis of nature of R group are of many types, right? But in biologically important aspect, if we see only those 20 amino acids are the amino acids which form important proteins, right? So only 20 amino acids participate in protein synthesis and the difference is where? in the R group, the variable side chain that we just saw. So if the R group is replaced by H, that is hydrogen, then the amino acid is called glycine. If that R group is replaced by CH3, that is methyl group, then the amino acid is alanine. And if it is replaced by hydroxymethyl group, then the amino acid is serine. Now this carboxyl and the amino group are responsible for both acidic as well as basic properties of the amino acid. 
Now, another mode of classification is presence of number of amino groups and COH groups. So, if the amino group is less than COH group, that is the COH group is more, the carboxyl group is more, then the amino acid is called acidic amino acid, see glutamic acid. Now, it has two COOH groups, very clearly you can see one and two, but only one NH2 group. That is the reason glutamic acid is an acidic amino acid. Then arginine. In arginine, there are one, two, three. Three amino groups, but only one COH group. So, what does it become? Basic amino acids. And finally, glycine. In glycine, NH2 is equal to COH. Therefore, it is a neutral amino acid. Now, there is another way of classification also. Now, there is another way of classification of amino acids which is on the basis of nutrition that is their requirement in our body they are of two types essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids now essential amino acids as the word suggests essential means they are important for the functioning of the body but they are not synthesized in our body so they have to be included in our diet we have to take them externally in order to fulfill body's needs so these amino acids are phenylalanine, valine, tryptophan, histidine, arginine, leucine, all these amino acids are essential amino acids. Another type is non-essential, which means they are there in your body. It means you don't, you, your body can synthesize it, means you don't have to eat them externally. So they are present in the body, used by the body and formed again inside the body. They are glycine, alanine, serine, cysteine. So in total, there are 9 essential amino acids and around 11 non-essential amino acids. Now, we said that carboxyl group provides acidic nature to the amino acid and amino group provides basic nature. So both the groups being present on the same carbon provide acidic as well as basic nature to the amino acid. So, we can say that amino acid in case of solutions exist as Zwitter ion. Zwitter ion. What is a Zwitter ion? It is a molecule which has opposite charges on it. In the same molecule, two opposite charges are present. Let's see the diagram. In the diagram, you can see this is a carboxyl group, right? And this is an amino group. So, what happens is in the solution, if hydrogen from carboxyl group gets transferred to the nitrogen group, the nitrogen group acquires an extra positive charge because of the transfer of the proton and the carboxyl group gets a negative charge. So both positive as well as negative charges are present on the same molecule. This molecule is called Zwitter ionic form of amino acid, right? So in the solutions, the NH2 and the COH group have the tendency to get ionized. So to summarize all the concepts, we can say that proteins are biomacromolecules which are formed of monomers amino acids. The amino acids are those chemical compounds which have both NH2 and COH group on the same carbon known as alpha carbon. There are in total 20 protein building amino acids and these amino acids depend on the nature of the variable R chain which is present in them. Now on the basis of number of amino groups and carboxyl group present in them, they can be classified as acidic, basic and neutral. And on the basis of requirement of the body, they can be classified as essential and non-essential. The NH2 group is responsible for basic nature, the COH group is responsible for acidic nature. And it is because of these groups, their amino acids have a tendency to form Zwitter ion. So this is all about introduction of proteins and amino acids. In next video, we will learn about how peptide bonds are formed. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com. Simply easy learning.